Good evening, dear all. Welcome to the next Staying Life concert um, at a very unique concert hall called Internet and beautiful background of Musik Brauerei um, in Berlin. I'm very happy that you joined me today and it's gonna be a big pleasure for me to perform music for you. In spite of all the distance between us, all the kilometers, we all meet here to experience uh, very, very beautiful music. So I'm very, very excited for it. Um, now we face many um, basically difficult time um, and we miss so many things in our lives. And one of this, uh, one of those thing is um, that we miss live concert. And that's why I guess we all meet here tonight to, um, to get closer to this experience that we usually get in the concert hall. That's why right at the beginning I would love to say a big thank you to Staying Life for uh, making it possible. I can only imagine how much effort and work it brings to, it takes to create such a beautiful venue online. And I feel honored to, to be here and perform for you. For those who don't know me and you see my first for the first time, my name is Zuzanna Shambelan. Um, I'm a Polish cellist, although I was born in New York. I, uh, I was raised in Poland and uh, six years ago I moved to Berlin to study. And recently I, uh, I played my final master exam. Um, and I must say it's uh, my first time when I perform for the public I can't really see. So it's gonna be a challenge for me. Um, but on the other hand, I know that you are there behind the screens um, and you give me your good energy. So thank you for that. And I will try my best to, to transmit the best out of this beautiful music. So the first, uh, at first when I got asked to play here, I was thinking what kind of program I should perform. And my first spontaneous thought was to play something for you that is extremely exciting because this is another thing that we, I think, all miss um, in our lives because every day looks pretty much the same. So I really wanted to play something energetic and transmit uh, this passion and uh, powerful music to you so we all feel a life full, full of that energy. So. I will start uh, with the first piece um, called Bunraku and it's written by Japanese composer Tosh Toshiro Mayuzumi and it was uh, written in 1964. Bunraku is the name of a traditional Japanese theater founded in Osaka um, in the 17th century. And around this time, there was another uh, theater that got also famous called Kabuki, but um, um, it didn't involve puppets in the in the um, in the play, and it was rather um, meant to be performed for higher society. And uh, the topic of those uh, plays were usually centered on on um, historical events such as battles, for example. And on the other hand, we had Bunraku, which was, uh, the main topic was love. The tragic one when, uh, where the lovers, by the end of the play, um, try to, I mean, commit suicide. They cannot be together, so that's their decision. Um, and actually, it reminds me of uh, a book uh, by, uh, written by Schiller, uh, The Sorrows of Young Werther. Um, when, when the book was published, um, I hope you all uh, read this book, otherwise um, it's going to be spoiler, a spoiler alert. So the main character commits a suicide. And um, when the book was published, many people actually committed a suicide. So that was the case also with Bunraku. Um, 
I need to add uh, one more information that back then soci society was um, divided into classes and all the marriages were arranged. That's why um, it was impossible that um, true love uh, really existed legally. Um, that's why um, uh, when, when uh, the young people saw the play, they, uh, they got simply inspired by this romantic, but at the same time, very violent action and, um, and started committing a suicide. I think it's uh, quite incredible how art can uh, impact uh, people's de decisions, very, very important ones. Mm, yes, but uh, that's one aspect of Bunraku. The other one, why, uh, why it's so uh, fascinating is that during the play um, we have three elements that appear that are equally important and make the overall impression of, of the play. So first we have, of course, the puppets, the characters, and um, if you imagine the stage, uh, each of the puppets was operated by three men wearing black clothes and um, it took them many many years uh, till they could actually master in it and perform it in public. Then we had an actor on the side of the stage who was reading uh, the story. Uh, so he was a narrator and at the same time voice of all the puppets. Mm, so you can imagine his voice changing quite often because he was the character, for example, of, of a female and male. And of course, we had music, and the music was performed on um, on traditional instrument called shamisen, mm, and it looked a bit like a lute with three strings. Um, and what is interesting, those strings were hit by a little stick. Mm, so the sound production was quite percussive, I would say. And it was mixed with uh, other techniques uh, such as uh, vibrato, um, yeah, for example. Um, so I speak about all these elements because uh, you will hear them all um, in the piece that I'm going to perform for you in a second. So the plot, the characters, the narrator and, and uh, music, um, it's all there, my cello shouldn't sound like a cello anymore. That's my task and um, yes, enjoy.
So, uh, yes, as you see, we uh, started quite intense um, and we will have a short um, intermission with second movement and then again very intense with the third movement of 
Zoltan Kodai uh, Sonata for Cello Solo. Uh, you just heard that I tuned my two lower string differently um, because this piece is written with scordatura, which means um, I have to tune my um, instrument in a different um, mode. So instead of G and C, I have here um, F sharp and um, B natural. Um, so Zoltan Kodai, the composer of that piece, comes from Hungary. Um, and I would love to speak shortly about uh, the background and his musical idea that is uh, present in that work. Um, so um, from the very beginning, uh, Kodai was really... Um, uh, he loved folk music and... Um, he decided uh, to, his mission was to bring this music to a stiff classical world and present it as it would be as good as other uh, well-known composers. Um, and what he did at the beginning of the 20th century, he decided to take a big gramophone with, uh, and he was walking from the village to another village, recording all the songs there, so people uh, who lived there performed for him live um, folk music. And he was recording it on the gramophone, coming back home and writing all the songs down. He did really incredible work. Um, and then he used uh, this, um, this material in his uh, music in the future. So um, you will hear uh, the heart of that piece is folk music. Um, the second movement, uh, which, which is slow, um, the main topic, I would say, is the improvisation. Um, it sounds a bit like I will just sit and start to improvise for you, uh, which is, of course, not the case. Um, and then uh, the third movement is a crazy dance. Um, you will see how crazy it gets. Um, it's, I think, worth to mention that this piece is um, known as um, one or the most difficult piece ever uh, written for cello. And um, I wouldn't make a big deal out, out of that if uh, it wasn't uh, Kodai's intention. He was actually quite proud of it, that he wrote something so demanding for cellists. Um, but anyways, it's not uh, the most important thing about this piece. Um, yes, I take a deep breath and uh, play it for you. Enjoy.
Thank you. 
Thank you very much for listening. Um, now, if uh, you would like to ask uh, any questions about the pieces I just played or um, ask a question to me, uh, please do. Uh, or maybe you want to share uh, your thoughts with me. I would love to uh, read it. So now, that's, that's the time for it. Let me just uh, put my cello on the side. Thanks you guys for watching and being here with me, first of all. Um, so let's see, let's see, are there any questions? Um, not really, um, but oh, I'm, I'm so happy to see, you, uh, see your comments here, that you are here with me. Um, I don't know, uh, what should we do? If there are no, um, let's see, let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, I feel like uh, I need to drink a lot of water now. <laughs> uh, definitely. Um, also, uh, I must say, talking and playing it's quite challenging. Uh, but I hope uh, what I was saying about this piece was interesting to you. Mm. Okay. So, I'm not, uh, it's a uh, cut, no? The, oops. Yes, it's there. Um, okay, let's see um, if any more comments appeared. Ha ha ha, no. Good. Um, anyways, I will play uh, one piece more to say goodbye and good evening to you. At the end, if, if there's any question that appear, I will uh, try to answer that as well. But anyways, I um, hug you all and thank you for being here with me tonight. And yeah, see you.